Good morning, viewers, and very warm welcome to the 17th episode of the Meet the Media Veteran series. Today's episode, once again, we have with us senior film journalist, actual curator, and author Miss Ratnotma Singh Gupta. So, before presenting her detailed introduction, may I first welcome Miss Ratnotma Singh Gupta to the show? Hello. Very warm welcome to Ratnotma to the show again. It is such an honor having you on, you know, back on the show today. Uh, so let me present uh, her detailed intro once again to the audience who are joining us first time today. Uh, Ratnotma Sen Gupta is a senior film journalist, pastoral curator, organizer, and author who has inspired a generation of film journalists and many film critical students have grown up reading her columns and articles. She is a recipient of National Film Award and has served on several international film juries. She is the daughter of scriptwriter Nebundu Ghosh, a leading name in Bengali literature and legendary screen playwright and director. Ratnotma Singh Gupta turned director with And They Made Classics on a unique bonding between screenwriter Nebundu Ghosh and legendary film director Mr. Bimal Roy. The hour long documentary has been screened in international festivals and film institutions in Bangalore, Dhaka, Mumbai, Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Pune, Ahmedabad, Guwahati, and many other cities as well. Very senior journalist, she has been writing for newspapers and journals and participating in discussions on the electronic media, teaching mass communication students, writing books on cinema and art, programming film festivals, and curating art exhibitions. She has written on Hindi films for Encyclopedia Britannica and has been a member of CBFC in Ministry of Information Broadcasting. She has served on National Film Award Jury and has, has herself won a national award. She has been the editor of an entertainment website, cinebengal.com, and former arts editor of the Times of India, and as also the member of NFDC's script committee. Author of Krishna's Cosmos and several other volumes, she has recently edited The Bird Called Happiness, Me and I, Kadam Kadam, Chuninda Kahania, Nebendu Ghosh. May I request Ratnotma to kindly deliver a second talk in this series, Is Cinema the Mother of All Arts? Thank you so much, Ratnotma, for joining us today. Thank you, Rizwan. And thank you, all of you friends who are listening to this talk, who are in this show with us. Is Cinema the Mother of All Arts? Now, obviously, that is an inverse proposition. Because we all know cinema is just about a uh, hundred years and some years old, which is probably the youngest art, in fact, which was the art invented in the 20th century. And it became possible only after photography came into existence. Before photography, photography took over from portrait painting, in a sense, from landscape art, in a sense, from artists who were painting, depicting the reality around them. Was put within frames and photography did that. It made it brought, brought reality within the frames through the lens. And this lens is what the filmmaker built upon. And instead of one frame, it had so many frames in every second. So that, you know, like consecutive uh, the playing of the frames gave you the illusion of movement. And then there was sound, then there was editing. All of this built upon the science of chemistry, of physics, without which we could not have had talkies and uh, so on and so forth. Now, even photography, this depiction of reality, it took over from artists and portrait painters, of course not just of the preceding centuries. There were people living in caves who were painting the reality around them. The cave paintings, as we see, they had these animals, they had the hunting scenes, they had the trees, they had the 
uh, bee hives and honey, bee collection, honey collection. All of this was depicted in the caves. In other words, even the cave dwellers told the story of their lives through visual images. Now, this telling the story ultimately defined is the background, is the, is the ground for every artwork. Story of our lives is what every art puts into frames, within frames. What does it do? What we have done today. If the hunters have gone out and killed a wild boar, they come and at the end of the day, they light a bonfire, they cook their meat, and then after they are happy and satisfied, they sit around the fire and they would perhaps sing. We have no recording of that. But yes, we certainly have the depiction of the wild boars and of the hunting on the cave walls. So storytelling is what all the arts started with. Story of our lives. It is through lived experience, it is the communication of a lived experience that an artist attends, whether through imagery, through visual image, yes, but it is also the emotions felt. We were shivering out of fear. Shivering is an action. It is also an emotion. We were crying out of pain. That is an action, that is also an emotion. So all of these emotions and actions started coming into sound, into music, into songs, and thus started much of folk music. Folk music, folk songs, folk instruments, the conch shells came out of the natural ocean, the flute came out of the reeds or of the bamboo or of essentially out of a hollow uh, wood, piece of wood. And that is how music kept developing and songs kept singing of life and also dance came into existence. Now dance also would be celebrating, would be a boisterous physical expression of an emotion, of primarily joy, of companionship, of being together in the company of like-minded people, like-minded friends, of loved people. So dance. In India in particular, in the ancient times, the dance was also the theater, dance theater. Our Kathakali, our folk forms like Yakshagana or Gambira or so many other art forms, they would tell the stories of our mythological heroes, people of the past who may have lived or who may have been idolized as the kind of life we should live. So that is how dance started. Dance started once again, telling stories. And dance, music, theater, all of them, because they were telling stories of life lived, as I said, action, emotion, narration, were all woven together in one garland, whether it was theater, whether it was dance, or whether it was songs and music, they were all building upon a story, a narrative that was about lived life and how that can be an example or how what has to be shunned. The evil man, the villain, even in classical dramas, in classical dance, 
the evil has to be shunned, has to be kept out of social life because it is wrong for the polarity, it is wrong for the larger good. And that is how even dance, particularly uh, uh, formalized dance like Kathakali or, uh, uh, or as I mentioned, Yakshagan or uh, uh, Kuryakdam, they all had the good and the evil, the hero and the villain. And of course, all of these elements were also what Raja Ravi Varma built upon when he started painting on canvas for the first time using oil paints. He started painting. Uh, not cloth was uh, not a novelty. Uh, our artists, our uh, miniature artists, our uh, uh, the Pichwai painters, they all used to paint on cloth, but oil, the use of oil-based medium. Of course, uh, earlier also they used natural stones, ingredients and all of that. But once it started happening on canvas and it started depicting real life as realistically as possible, because our mythological heroes were of course they are depicted through dance on stage, on the temple courtyards, but they were stylized, the mask was codified, the paints they used uh, was codified. So those who knew, they knew that this green is for a hero, that this color is for a villain, that this movement meant this, that this gesture, hand gesture, the mudras was talking about so and so things. So it was codified. Much of this carried on to iconography, into architecture, into sculpture, where uh, the human form being as it is, you know, uh, uh, a deity, a god, uh, or a goddess was uh, obviously shown in the best light, very uh, perfectly, perfectly symmetrical body architecture, broad shoulders, narrow waist, uh, uh, well-formed uh, hips and breasts of women. All of these were idolized. So how do you make out which one is a, this goddess and which one is that? Which one is the goddess of prosperity and which one is the goddess of learning? You start learning through the symbols, the, the uh, vahana, or the instrument they would play. Lakshmi would be on a lotus, or she would be with two elephants. These were the signs of prosperity. The lotus, or in an ocean, because Lakshmi is supposed to have come out of the ocean when great churning happened. Saraswati, on the other hand, is the goddess of learning. She would have a veena. She's the goddess of all the arts. She would have a veena with her. She had the swan with her. The swan, which takes only the, the essential, the cream, and leaves out the water. So the arts, she, she notifies the arts. She, the, the arts take the essence of reality. They take the cream of everyday life and bring it to the rasikas. So that is how you started identifying the gods and goddesses. And this is what Raja Ravi Varma built upon. He had the gods and goddesses, but he had them in natural human form. Not idolized, not two-dimensional, but like we see them in three dimension, in real life poetry. And from there, Dada Sahib Palki, he, when uh, Raja Ravi Verma paintings were so popular that everybody wanted to have them in their homes, he started uh, bringing out oleograph prints. And these prints were so popular, there was uh, an unending demand for them. And he set up printing presses. And Palki, who had trained as an artist, also 
monitoring, uh, also eventually set up a printing press. He also had a photography store. Uh, but photography, mind you, in those days, the pre predecessor of cinema, photography was not trusted. It was, there was distrust about photography, that it took away the life of actual human beings. So people did not want to be photographed. But these paintings of Ravi Varma, which showed the gods and goddesses as human beings, that was very acceptable. People could identify with these gods and goddesses. So they were popular and everybody wanted to have them in their home. And in a sense, these paintings led to uh, Falke when he set up, when he didn't do well with the photography store, he set up these printing presses with Ravi Varman. He was printing these oleographs. And uh, out of that, he developed an interest in telling the story of these mythological heroes or lives of, uh, uh, say, Rabi, uh, Harish Chandra and so many others, Samudra Manthan. Uh, uh, he did all of these mythological. So he, he also took, he was inspired in more than one way by Ravi Varma's paintings and prints. So, Obviously, we see cinema once again deriving its, I don't know if I can say paternity, but deriving its life, its essence, its spirit from A, storytelling, B, uh, photography, three, C, art, painting, D, architecture, sets in uh, palaces, uh, the uh, palaces of the gods, palaces of the kings. In early life, it was the high life, the life of the gods and goddesses that were the subject. And it was life of then, after that, the uh, historicals, the life of the uh, past rulers, the grandeur had to be depicted. So these sets, the knowledge of knowledge of architecture, knowledge of sculpture, knowledge of decoration. Every day, the uh, structures had to be uh, grand, but also the interiors had to bring home a period. What could have been? How could they have lived? How might the gods have lived? No, the glitz and glamour part came later. But even in the earliest times, how do you de depict grandeur? You endow them, like I said. How do you depict She rides, she sits on a huns, on a swan. Swan, which depicts or, or uh, metaphorically indicates taking the essence of life. How, how is Saraswati the goddess of the arts? She has a veena, the, the, you know, the difficult instrument to play. But what a grand sound. I have that many people playing the veena because it is such a difficult instrument to, to uh, play and hold the attention of people. Anyway, so all these things woven together, like when you're knitting, it's not one needle, it's not one thread, a ball of wool. You have different colors, you weave in different and technology designs. The motion picture of arts and sciences came into being. So the cinema is the culmination. It is the amalgamation of all the art forms that mankind has known, mankind has practiced, mankind has grown up with, and mankind still trusts and uh, involves in. It still practices, it still uh, revels in all these arts, art, painting, 
is still the first thing a child does. Even before the child starts writing ABC, he starts scribbling on the walls, painting. He starts painting the sun a circle before he knows uh, the geometry. He starts painting sun rays, straight lines. He starts painting mountains. So the very basic expression of uh, natural expression of man is art of painting, maybe. And what does the paint do? It starts once again telling story of one's life. So every art form tells the story of our life. And every reader before cinema, of course, we had the books. Books also came into existence when existence through technology, when the printing press came into uh, existence, the wider circulation of books happened. And before that, calligraphy, people would write the books, illustrate them, illuminate them. These little paintings, all so much of our miniatures, so much of our palm leaf manuscripts, they were calligraphically written and illustrated by artists. But to preserve two things, experience, lived experience, and accumulated knowledge, wisdom. What the sages of the ancient times, and this goes for every part of the world. It is, whether it's in, in the Latin America, whether the Incas, or whether in the Altamira caves of Spain, of Europe, Southern Europe, or elsewhere in Indonesia or Australia, uh, where early original life, Aboriginal life, uh, came into uh, social living, came into the living life as a community, happened everywhere. It was the life as it was lived and the accumulated wisdom that the elders the, of the community wanted to hand over to the young, younger uh, members of the, of the community, of the tribe, of, the, of society, of country, of nation, of, of the world, citizens of the world. Why? Because lifespan is limited. If we had to spend the whole life learning just a few of the things, so much of our life experience can be uh, gained through the experience of the others. And this vicarious living, living through the experience of, other, of another is how we become enriched. We become wiser beyond our years. And cinema helps the most in that. Why? Why? Because whereas dance lives only when it is physically performed before a viewer. Whereas a song, until technology started recording, a song lived only when it was sung before a listener. Painting lived, yes, but even so, it did not travel as much as it does today once camera arrived. And after camera, of course, once cinema happened, cinema could move from one part of the world to another. And it took the stories of lives of one fascinating corner of the this planet, of the same planet where I exist in this part and you exist on a very distant part, perhaps. I may be living in the uh, northern uh, uh, poles and you may be living in the uh, jungles of Africa. And, and or, or it could be, it could be in the depths of the oceans. 
So all these experiences without going out of our homes, without going out of our drawing rooms, particularly in these lockdown periods, in particular, people have survived the lack of communication with community through communication with the rest of the world via the camera, via the channels, the reality of today, the news, and via cinema, the reality of life lived in so many different parts of the world, in so many years, the classics of Charlie Chaplin, the classics of Hitchcock, classics of uh, so many of our ancients, Nitin Bose of New Theatres, uh, Bimal Roy of Bombay, Bombay Talkies, uh, so many other directors of the South, etc., or of Hollywood, of France, of Italy, of Czechoslovakia, of Russia, of Germany, countries which are not the first countries we think of, but the first countries to have created some, some of the most moving experiences on cellular. Japan, Kurosawa, Bergman, Sweden, Tarkovsky, Russia, so many of our masters who have brought to us not only the horrors of war, what is to be shunned, but also the joys of youth, the joys of childhood, innocence of childhood that is to be nurtured. All these emotions, all these values, value systems, all of that comes through cinema, which brings it, which stands on the basis of, which weaves in the the practices the, of the art form, the wisdom of the artists of your, and brings us every possible experience that we can live for or ask for. So in that sense, cinema goes beyond not only the immediate, goes beyond not only our drawing room, our walls, goes beyond not only beyond our states and countries, it goes beyond not only the, uh, the, the, the surface of the earth, it goes right under the waters, it can go right into the skies. I mean, how many space travel uh, experiences have come to us? Gravity of being out there, where so much of our stars and suns and moons exist, being there, not even a dot, not even a speck of dust, and yet we are a part of that, that feeling, that entire bursting forth of every bonding, and becoming one with cosmos, with the universe, that has become possible because of cinema. Cinema may not be real. It may not be bringing you exactly what is happening now, but it creates the reality. Art, every art creates a reality. Acting creates a reality. Acting creates truth. Acting is a lie that creates truth. So is camera creating a truth for cinema and making it possible for us to experience the real through the illusions. That is why cinema is the mother. Thank you so much, Ratnotma, for such a scintillating talk today. It's been, it's been a very enriching experience to all of us. You know, you took us to down the memory lane. You know, how did this art form started right from photography, cave paintings, you know, then, then how all the art forms amalgamated into the, you know, the, the cinema which we watched, you know, uh, today. Uh, 
I, know I, 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 I have I have cheated a little bit. I didn't go into the details of the physics and chemistry part of cinema. Editing, sound, these are all, of course, building on the science part. And I have kind of glided over them. But I, I'm sure my uh, friends have got what I am. Right. Sure, sure. But you touched upon the, you know, persistent of vision and how does, you know, illusion of the emotion it come, comes into the force and how do you sort of experience in cinema. So that was really a very enriching experience. Uh, so, you know, talking, uh, now taking this uh, talk to, you know, uh, uh, forward for the question answers. Uh, so before I take, you know, a few questions and I have a few comments as well as questions to you. You know, this cinema has come a long way from, you know, Lumiere Brothers to, you know, then Mary's, D.W. Griffith, Eisenstein, etc. And then uh, now we see cinema in, in two different forms. You know, then you have the cinema, like, you know, cinema of the Abbas Krishwami from Iran, which has taken, you know, minimalistic approach. And then you have the brilliant directors like, you know, uh, Tarkos, K. Binul, Bergman, etc., which has put, you know, cinema to the another level. Then you have the cinema from Hollywood, which is basically the sci fi cinema, actually. So my question to you is, you know, can we put up, you know, this sci-fi cinema into the art category? Can we say, you know, this this cinema is like, you know, art form, the sci-fi cinema of the Hollywood? Absolutely. I mean, what is the definition of art? Can we really say this is art and that is not? Bad hand narrating, but calligraphy is also an art form. Why? Handwriting can be bad, but it becomes art when it appeals to the aesthetics. Just looking at the way the alphabets have been structured, where it goes up, where it comes down, whether it's in Chinese writing, Japanese writing, whether it is the uh, Persian and Arabic calligraphy, whether it is Sanskrit, whether it is any other uh, language. There is just as in something as simple as handwriting, it becomes art only when it appeals to aesthetics. And that aesthetic, what is life? Life out there on the streets is life, right? What is happening? The minute there is an accident, you know, our frame, our lens zooms in only on that little bit. We, we, we are looking through that. That framing is art. Because we can't comprehend the whole thing. We can't bring everything into our rooms. From our rooms, we can't look at everything we only we can either look at the sky or we can look at the ground so that window that framing that is art and when your sci-fi talks about an experience i was just talking about gravity uh, there was another film uh, I, i'm sorry i forget the name immediately but it was where uh, some aliens have landed and they are writing something. And there is this professor from a uh, university who's taken to decipher. She's a linguist and she's taken to decipher the writings. It was a very recent two or three years ago. Um, I'll remember the name in a little while. Uh, so she's taken there and so communication, writing, alphabets is communication. Now art, when this art communicates that no matter how alien they are, I'm using the word in the uh, normal sense, not as, as a creature from another world, but as something that we do not know. No matter how alien, there are certain things we communicate, which is why even those who don't hear who are uh, orally challenged, uh, 
you know, they, they can follow the signs, mudras. That was what was the mudras were doing, uh, codified because long distance away and Sanskrit, once it became a language of the uh, only the uh, learned and it was no longer the uh, lived language, it probably never was. It probably was always the language of the learned, like Latin and the used, uh, used languages, spoken languages, probably were the uh, dialects. But what I'm trying to arrive at is that language was communicating as long as a sci-fi is communicating uh, an emotion or a reality that we can identify or uh, be respond to. You know, I mean, uh, uh, video game also builds on a certain reality, that of the unknown. There have been films. Uh, what film was that? We had Ra one. Yeah. Random access dot one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Random access dot one, but ra one. The minute it is random access dot one, it is sci fi. The minute I say ra one, it's the evil character, the evil character with 10 heads who is almost impossible to kill. There we go into the realm of mythology, art. Uh, uh, metaphors, art builds on metaphors, art communicates through metaphors. So then it ceases to be a sci fi, it becomes art. True. I think there is a, a strong school of thought, you know, which comes heavily on these films, especially. You know, they say, you know, the, the use of, you know, frequent graphics and animation is not an art. So uh, that's a school of thought which still exists. Even the uh, filmmakers like you know Martin Scorsese. So uh, he has come heavily on these comic films, you know, which have been made, you know, for the especially for children actually. So they say, you know, these these films doesn't come into the you know cinema category or maybe the art category. So what is your take on that? Uh, see, sight and sound. Cinema is the art of sight as well as sound. Now. A lot of people say that why should cinema have a dialogue? It's a visual art form. It should not require dialogue. Okay, so it doesn't require dialogue, but it does require sound. On the other hand, there is also, I mean, including people like Satyajit Ray, who have said that sound is very important part of cinema. He has made films. Uh, I was watching a very short film the other day, two. It's about two boys, one boy. And we, during lockdown, we identify with this very well. There is one little boy. He's a rich man's uh, kid, lives upstairs within the house. He's not allowed to go down and play with the street kids. And there is the Jhopi Jhopi Ka Bacha. He flies kite, he runs around. He chases the butterflies and the grasshoppers. He's uh, peeping into the bird's nest and so on. And this guy has all these toys, mechanical toys. They play the drum. They walk like the robo, everything. But And there is no dialogue. Yeah, But there is communication. The boy outside, he's flying a kite. The boy inside, he's unhappy about that. He gets his air gun and uh, fires at the kite. The kite comes down. This poor man's child is crestfallen, but he goes away without any complaint. The only sorrow that you betrayed. You know, you were also enjoying my flying the kite only by looking at it, weren't you? The, the expression and the eyes say, not the words. There is no dialogue. And yet, when he goes away, this child goes away, that other child is lonely and he doesn't like that. He goes to the toys and he starts playing, fidgeting with the toys, but he's not happy. Now, without dialogue, this entire film, but Satyajitri says, sound, dialogues are very important. Why should I not use dialogue? 
because uh, I think if this was uh, during any of the people, Gonoshotsu, he had said in one interview taken during that time, when he had said that there are a lot of social ills that only dialogues and through you know verbalizing we can decry. Uh, not only just decry uh, social ills, there are a lot of things to be stated. And for that, we need the dialogues. So cinema has been blessed with techno by technology with both sight and sound. So why not? True that. So uh, we have, you know, a question uh, from Anisha Badani. She asked, you know, who has been your favorite artist and why? Well, is it possible ever to say who has been your favorite artist? You mean artist as in painter? Is it artist as? Uh, do you do you you know? When uh, you have to forgive me, I go into stories about my life and my people very much. So when my son was growing up, he didn't want to have fish because fish has bones, and he wanted chicken. And uh, in a Bengali household, you can understand how difficult, how uh, what a what a you know sacrilege that is. How can you not have fish anyway? So I told him that you know for one month I'm going to serve you chicken at every meal, and then after that one month you tell me whether you want. It so happened he came to Calcutta for a holiday. We used to live in Delhi. He came to Calcutta for a holiday, and everywhere he went, we were not with him. He had come with cousins. And everybody said, "Oh, he doesn't have fish, so he was fed chicken." And when he went back after the holiday, he said, "Mom, you were right. I don't want chicken anymore. Can I have some fish?" So it's like that. You like certain things in every artist. You, every artist. You know, we have. Is it possible to say we want daylight, twenty-four hours of the day? What would life be? in during the lockdown when people were not allowed to go out it was sundays at the seven days a week did we want that so too much of a good thing is also something that people don't really enjoy don't relish so it is not uh, possible to say which artist i like most because i love miniatures i love uh, folk painting i love kaligar painting i love nasidwara painting i love M. F. Hussain. I love Satish Gujral. I love uh, Raza's uh, uh, paintings. I love Jia Santosh's new tantric paintings. I love contemporary artists' installations. I I, I love a whole lot of things. Sure, I'm sure Anisha. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, Anisha. Uh, uh, please, you'll have to uh, allow me to continue to love. <laughs> <laughs> so I am sure Anisha has you know she she got her answer uh, yeah she says well you are allowed to have your favorite <laughs> so she you have already told <laughs> your favorite so lots of you know artist of of yours uh, uh, because I told, spoke about Raja Ravi Verma let me also tell you uh, Raja Ravi Verma himself has painted so many mythological uh, situation there is one painting of Sita Hara. You can, uh, I can tell you that that is one painting that had a deep impression on me. You know, because it visualized for me the energy, the power, the fight a bird can put up against a sword. Yeah, and uh, so the, there are such things. You know, in every, uh, in the art of every artist, there are certain paintings of them. Which I love more than others, and there are certain paintings of um, portrait artists which I love. I I, I can tell you uh, what uh, really uh, one loves. Uh, when Indira Gandhi passed away, there was a portrait painting done where she was shown. Uh, she had passed away, remember, and she died uh, by the bullet. Uh, Someone had uh, killed her, and but she was a leader, and so she's shown wearing a garland, 
except the flower in the middle, which is usually a rose, that suddenly has become a blood spread. What a dynamic, what a telling image that she had been killed. Now, that is what I look for when I'm looking at a painting, whether it communicates something more than just the color of the, the, the paint, the lines, or the form, the figure. With the figure, uh, Indira Gandhi, we have seen so many times, but this painting does what a photographer cannot do. It takes the real into the realm of surreal, and it takes the reality into the realm of larger than reality. It comments on the reality. That is what becomes to that. I'm sure, Anisha, I think you, you got extensive answer of your question. Now, we have another sort of question from Shraddha Rizwan. Uh, she says, I think she's asking question from uh, critic point of view, your critic point. Uh, she says, greetings, deliverance of a dialogue by an actor. Uh, does it always match how a director wants it? Or is it left to the actor completely? See, earlier, many of the directors, you know, uh, would act out the scenes. They would act out the scenes and even uh, seasoned artists uh, would follow what the director wanted uh, as the director wanted it to be done. Uh, because the director has the complete picture in his mind. He knows exactly what he wants to sure. show through that one frame, which that artist doesn't. Uh, However, a lot of the later artists who've been trained, uh, actors who've been trained in NSD or FTI or wherever, various film schools now, directors prefer to leave it to the actors because also because the actors now know they are not, not, so, not so much as it used to be in the 60s and 70s. They're not written not what Rajesh Khanna had to do, two hours on this set, three hours on another, five hours elsewhere, not spread out their energies on so many sets. They give more of their time and the uh, directors also make the films within a set uh, time frame. So the actors are involved, Proshinji for one, when he was doing Monir Manush, it was based on the life of Lalun Pukir. Yes. Uh, he struggled so much. Uh, Lalun Pukir, he had prepared for that role. He had gone into the uh, uh, the, the lifestyle. Uh, he, he did not wear jean pants. He did not sleep on a bed. Uh, he had a certain kind of food. Uh, and, and lived a certain life, a very austere lifestyle of the bowels. Uh, and the body language changes with that. And there is no two ways about it because like as uh, uh, we know, you know, I, if I'm wearing a sari, my body language would be of a certain kind. If I'm in a jeans, pants, and t-shirt, my body language immediately changes. My walk changes. The way I move my hand changes. The way I push back my hair changes. These things happen. And that becomes a part of the character that the actor is showing. So actors now, A, because they are more trained, B, because they are not spreading out their time and energy as much as the earlier actors did. Directors often leave it to. But of course, the actor also discusses, would or should ideally discuss the entire film. The way films are made today, they discuss the, 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 not only the individual characters, but the totality of interactions between the characters with the directors and therefore uh, they are able to deliver what the director wants. 
to that. I'm sure, Shraddha, your question is well answered. Uh, before we close this show, I have, you know, one uh, personal question, sort of, uh, uh, how do we sort of, you know, read layers of art in cinema, basically? For example, uh, if you look at the films of Zhang Yimou from China, uh, he's, you know, one of my favorite uh, cinema master. So if you look at his films, like, uh, for example, Hero or maybe House of Flying Daggers, you know, there are certain sequences in the films, you know, uh, those are not sort of, those are not possible in, in re a realistic way, actually. Those are not real sequences, but still you believe them, actually. The way Zhang Yimou put up, you know, everything in the mise scene. For example, in, in, in uh, Hero, especially, a character, you know, he runs on the, you know, lake, lake water, actually. Which is not which is not realistic actually, but still you believe it. You know that's the level of you know maybe probably the art of the Zhang Yimou. You believe that particular mise en scene, that particular scene. Similar way, the way he showcases the Buxi art form of the you know China, uh, especially in House of Flying Beggars. You know people characters you know riding on the trees, high on the bamboo trees and fighting there on the bamboo trees. You know which is another level of the art. So you know how should a you know common uh, cinema goer you know he should read the labels of the art in, in this sort of cinema uh, I, 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 uh, I while you were talking of young I was reminded of uh, some of the Chinese films like uh, Red Sog um, and so on uh, but two two of the directors two white two I'm going to talk about three directors uh, um, one of course is uh, very recently I uh, watched Three Colors Blue, parts of right. it. Right. Yeah. Now, blue, the very uh, concept. What is blue? Blue is said to be a color, a soft right. color, color of so, uh, sadness. Yes. I'm in the blues. I'm going through the blues. Uh, mellow emotions. To that. But blue. In the trilogy, three colors. Blue yeah. is the color of France's flag, which has three colors, blue, white, and red. Red, and, red. And uh, uh, he uses blue. Uh, he uses the colors as liberty, equality, fraternity. True. Now, how does he establish the blue? It is not, it is about liberty, but in a very different kind. It's not a, a warfare. It's not about freedom struggle of India or anybody else. It is not even a loud feministic emancipation story about how the husband tortures and the wife has to put up and then she comes out, you know. It starts off. I'm going to just mention three or four scenes. Uh, bear with me. It starts off with a car seen from the bottom, you know, the camera is at the ground level. Okay. The car is above. Upside yeah, down, yeah. It's behind, upside down, yeah. Right. And it's going at a speed. Yeah. True. Then True. the camera is behind. There's one hand that comes out with True. a little uh, uh, wrapper. True. That wrapper is silver on one side, blue on the other. Do you notice the blue wrapper? It, uh, it flies in the wind because the car is racing fast. So what are the things established? A, there is a blue color. B, the wind, the car is moving very fast, is reinforced. C, the wrapper is a chocolate wrapper. So there is a child somewhere probably. True. Probably why? Because it's never shown. Yeah. But what happens? A little later, there is a boy who's playing, who's playing with his yo-yo and he's waiting for a lift and he sees this car coming and he walks up asking for lift. The car doesn't stop. He go, continues playing with his yo-yo and then there's a sound crash. Excellent. He looks up and he sees that the car has hit a tree. You see fumes and then the doors have opened. And then the ball falls down and comes out. So that child thing is reinforced. Yeah. True. So the layers that a car has crashed and a child has probably died in it. Yeah. 
this child emotion emotion the child the mother is in the hospital she comes out there is a grand uh, burial being given to the husband who was a very important personality it's on the tv so it's on the tv and that establishes that the husband was a very important person but she switches it off she doesn't want to listen so she's losing she's she's missing a child the she, the child she held in a womb the child she is raised the child who was so dear to her a part of her an extension of her that whole emotion is layered she switches off the tv so there are always layers without even a dialogue we were talking about dialogue and no dialogue without a dialogue all this is established three colors blue is one film where i would ask every viewer to have at least two or three screenings because i keep discovering new layers then when she goes into one house where there are documents you, you see her through the documents at the other end the cameras you know, documents files of documents these are not documents those are music scores that have been kept so she's on the other side the husband was the music composer but the camera is following her as she looks at the scores yeah much much later it is revealed that she herself was a composer and had been composing to the finger on the music notations so there are layers and layers then there is the sound and the uh, non existence of dialogue there is the the rat which has laid the uh, which yeah. has some yes, yes. Uh, babies and she yeah. can't take the sign no, sound of the baby so she goes out and get the neighbor's cat and puts it in the cupboard and then she can't sleep she's all herself horrified in a certain way but she can't you know so there is so much that has been said then she goes and visits a mother who's in an old age home the mother has forgotten so that is forgetting this daughter who has a mother cannot forget her daughter who has died in an accident but her mother who's aged who's amnesia has set in and but the mother is looking at a television she is looking at bungee jumping something yeah. that you cannot expect a 90 year old to do anyway yeah. so there are all these layers through one visual to the next visual as i was saying the other day juxtaposition of visuals that on the face of it don't say anything bungee jumping why is the old woman shown uh, watching bungee jumping because that's something she can never do even her, in her mind she can't jump up and down now she has forgotten her past so these layers are always there the more the layers the more rich the film visual is the more layers of sound and sight sight and sound together the more memorable the film becomes or enriching in the sense memorable revisiting becomes memorable every time you visit psycho for example how old and how many times but it's beyond the story when you start first time it's only the narration that you go second time you start noticing things third time i mean i'm talking of course of the classics not just today's film but when you revisit a classic you discover you unearth layers And that is what makes the experience so enriching. True that. Very well said. And, and you, beautifully, you beautifully explained, you know, uh, this blue, uh, which is one of my favorite indeed. Uh, and what a brilliant piece by Kishlovsky. You know, most of it. He oh, was famous. Massive. Multi-layer thing. Oh, right. Kishlovsky is the decalogue. If individually, decalogue. like I talked about, I talked about Ray's uh, short film too. but there is a, a film uh, in decalogue uh, which is i think the first or the second one there is no false god it's about science True and that. faith yeah you remember there where the child goes out on his uh, skate yes yes uh, sk skiing board skating board and he goes out on and and there is ice all over and uh, science has predicted that there will be no uh, 
whatever I, there will be no snow and the child that. goes out skiing and he falls into a pond to that hidden by this to that so i think kishlov the science to that to that kishlovsky is uh, i think he is the god of small things you know the way he he sort of you know catches these small things and in a creative he moves them out of it so those are yeah, those are brilliant this is short film about killing is another where you are, you keep on uh, seeing layers you know you you hate the man when he's doing the killing but you also hate the fact that he's being he's being killed for having killed to that you know true. i'm torn i mean i i am torn i i want him to die when he's killing but when true. he's actually dying i'm not so sure so true. that is what art is that is what art does absolutely it makes you question reality true. your own self to that and show story about love actually there's again a brilliant oh, film for oh Kishore. yes absolutely absolutely those decalogues like i said you know i'm like little gems top of the class absolutely absolutely, absolutely. and you know the the even you know a character is dipping you know this uh, sugar cube in, in tea uh, uh, a tea cup actually the way sugar cube is absorbing the you know water from the you know those are special emotions you know which sort of takes you into another space altogether so you know uh, that that's really fantastic uh, uh, inclusion of this i was, I was talking about blue yes just just i'm i can't help but go back to one scene everybody probably knows about it anybody who's been watching films where she goes into the she's given away the house everything has been taken away from the house she goes into her daughter's room and there's this chime hanging on the window right, which right, has been right. overlooked or has been left there because it's not right. so And then blue But crystals her, are there. She goes and touches the crystal. The crystals are blue, yes. sadness yes. blue once again, layer. But she touches it. She True. tries to bring it down. You know, a few of the crystals come into her hand. She lets go of it. The whole scene, without a dialogue spoken, she's letting go of the memory. she's letting go of her attachment to the child she's coming out of the past into the out of her yesterdays into her tomorrows to that so uh, uh, i i think we have the last uh, sort of comment or uh, comment come question as well from shraddha again she says that you know creativity is flow of emotions for a director it is their dream coming true having been understood by the viewers must be a thrilling experience so she wants your take on this creativity is a flow of emotion most certainly uh can you put it again uh, 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 a bird sings because it has a song but so when it reaches a listener it becomes a cuckoo's call it becomes a call that raises a certain emotion in a cuckoo bird it raises a different emotion in a human being it raises uh it signals a mating season for a cuckoo bird for a human emotion it can uh, talk of uh, in our folklore we have bidesia songs right. in our uh, in our uh, folklores are uh, not folklore uh, folk music we have hori in uh, so much else you know the cuckoo call can be the mango season the cuckoo sure. call can be kaha piu kaha piu kaha like so many uh, songs have, have said so videsia the, uh, the 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 man of the house has gone He's a migrant worker. He's gone to a foreign country to earn his livelihood. Right. Okay. Right. So, so, so that is creativity. That is a director creates because he he has a song. He has a song to sing. He has a song to give to the world. Not because Dada Sahib Falke award will get, Oscar will get, Berlin will show, Cannes will. सुनाएगा बताएगा नन ऑफ दैट ही हैज टू मेक दैट फिल्म बिकॉज ही हैज टू शेयर दैट सॉन्ग ओके 
when it reaches the listener to differently listener to different viewer it will indicate different things but when it indicates so many things to so many viewers that is a successful thing that is a successful creation when it touches so many chords and raises so many uh, thoughts in so many different ways to that so i am sure this question is also well answered uh, very well explained uh, again so creativity is yeah we really flow of emotion so with this uh, we have come to the end of the show because it's already one hour past now and it's been such a enriching experience for all of us today it's really wonderful talking to you always the the, the new uh, things you have brought into the talk today i'm sure you know this would have enriched audience a lot uh i i'm really thankful to you once again you know you joined us second time today my thanks to all of you it has I been as i said it has been a learning experience for me as well because uh i every time i come out of your classrooms and your interactions i am wiser thank you so In much your interaction thank you so much for joining us today it's been really very enriching today and dear viewers uh, that's it for today uh, in this show uh, tom uh, tomorrow we don't have a show we have a next show now on uh, coming saturday coming saturday the, the veteran uh, uh, film director and you know theater director mr froz abbas khan he'll be joining us at 11:30 sharp so i request you to kindly join us uh, on coming saturday at 11:30 in sharp so till then take good care of yourself uh, don't go outside stay at your home because still you know the corona cases are going on uh, all around us so uh, stay safe stay at your home thank you so much for joining us today thank you rizwan and thank you all my friends thank you so much thank you so much for joining us today